Uh, the, the point of this um, presentation was to show that you um, might not be able to bird extensively and go on all these elaborate trips right now, but it's still possible to bird locally, um, sometimes not even leaving your yard. Um, so I'll start off with that and then we'll gradually get to some more distant locations. But the first slide is uh, a painted bunting and I took this picture in um, Katuri Forest in City Park. Um, this is a breeding bird and um, it's a male painted bunting. Um, if you go in summer when it's hot and miserable, this was down Mona Lisa Drive um, and you can hear him sing in the morning. And, and if you're lucky, you can um, see one pop up um, and, and take a picture, which and I think this is one of the prettiest birds um, there is. So we're gonna go um, forward. Now, when I first started bird watching, I was um, stuck at home. It was after Katrina. I had um, an interest in gardening. And so the next slide is um, uh, the garden before Katrina. And I lived in Mattery on Clearview Parkway with no backyard. I had to pull up decking, um, break cement, um, literally to have this, this garden here. And after Katrina, um, I, I had seen a hummingbird in the yard and my parents had moved in with me. My mother was an invalid. I gave up practice to take care of her and I decided to try to get hummingbirds in the yard. So the next slide is after Katrina. And I've got um, vines. Um, I couldn't really uh, go horizontally, so I went vertically. I had um, annual vines, um, some perennial, some salvias, not the best choices in plants, um, but I was trying to get hummingbirds in the yard. I ended up going to the library and um, I had met um, eventually Nancy Newfield and she helped me with um, some plantings. And I eventually did see hummingbirds in the yard, but um, typically um, you're not gonna see them except during migration, spring and fall. It's possible to get some wintering hummingbirds, but um, I'm just not, I was not in the best, best location to be seeing hummingbirds. The next slide shows um, some more um, plantings, just some salvias. I had a trumpet creeper, which is a good vine. And I used to try to kill it, but then I, I read that it was a good native plant. So I decided to drag it across the yard. And um, uh, I ended up um, actually hanging a clothesline across the yard and wrapping the trumpet creeper around it. And, managed to get some pictures of hummingbirds um, bathing on, on the vines. The next slide, this is um, just some um, annual plantings, um, cardinal climber. The next slide is uh, uh, white cypress vine in trumpet and um, cardinal climber. Um, you just buy seeds and plant them. You know, this was not really putting out any amount of money or work. And then the next slide is um, a male ruby-throated hummingbird, which I did get in the yard. But again, you're just gonna see these in migration. They don't breed in the city. Um, they're not gonna breed in my yard. Um, if I see anything, it's gonna be um, post-nest dispersal or migration. Um, next slide is a female um, ruby-throat that I saw in the yard. Um, and that just shows you how tiny that bird is next to um, an abutal lawn. So then uh, one day I decided to, um, I needed to water the plants and I said, well, I'm gonna put the sprinkler on in the middle of the day so I don't disturb the birds. Um, and so the next slide, I get a, um, a hummingbird bathing in the sprinkler. So then I'm, you know, catching on, they need water. I mean, you can put seed out, you can put hummingbird feeders out, you know, um, and try to feed the birds, but they all need water and they need to bathe. So what you really want to try to focus on is a water source in the yard. Next slide is another um, uh, hummingbird bathing on the trumpet creeper. Um, these are female ruby throats. Um, Next slide is a wintering hummingbird. Now I didn't get a wintering hummingbird that year. It took probably a year or so after that. And I would occasionally see a rufus in the yard or a celasphorus and um, typically bathing. Um, the next slide is another um, uh, 
winter in Hummingbird, but they didn't stay long. I just didn't have enough cover. I didn't have enough um, territory really to hold the birds. Um, so I was thrilled to get them. So then I started looking um, into other birds. I'm not gonna see hummingbirds year round. Um, so the next, oh, that's another bathing one, sorry. <laughs> The next one is a um, song sparrow. And um, this bird spent the winter with me. I was, I was really surprised. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know a lot about birds, um, but I um, was um, surprised to see it spend the winter and it would bathe. And I had a couple of other plug-in fountains um, that made noise. So you don't, don't just wanna have water, you wanna have moving water. You wanna have a mister or a drip or something that the birds can hear and they will all come in to bathe. Um, next slide is a yellow warbler, and this is a, a spring and fall migrant. Um, it's one of the earliest ones in the fall. And if you have a sprinkler set up on leaves, they'll leaf bathe. Um, so that was nice to see. And um, the next slide is um, orchard orioles. And when these showed up, I had no idea what they were. I had three birds that looked like uh, different species, a male, um, an immature male and a female, and I couldn't figure out what they were, but they were all bathing. Um, so then I decided, um, my father had a house that was damaged in Katrina and it's in New Orleans and it had a bigger yard. So I wanted to um, start working on that property with intentions to eventually move in. So I decided to go big and make a big waterfall. So the next slide is um, the starting of the waterfall. So I bought a load of rocks and started digging a hole. And this is a yard, there was nothing in the yard but a cypress tree. And the next slide will show you the hole um, that I dug and then I piled up the mud behind it um, and started the waterfall. Um, so I bought a kit and the kit comes with a liner and a weir and um, a little bit of directions. And so this is the waterfall as it's coming along and um, still nothing in the yard, no plantings. Next slide shows it complete. But if you look, it's very um, uh, uninviting. Um, I still have lawn, which I decided to get rid of. I mean, it's a waterfall, but I don't know how a bird's supposed to approach it. So I had to rethink it. And I just, just planned on getting, um, I needed more cover and I needed a way for the birds to approach the waterfall. So the next slide is a step in that direction. Now I did plant some bottle brush, which isn't native, but I needed evergreen trees um, for hummingbirds to perch in. And they do have blooms that the hummingbirds use um, and the quick growing. So uh, I did buy some bottle brush and I actually had to take some out. They started growing a little bit too fast. So the next slide shows you what I've got now. The bottle brush grew quickly. Now this is about an eight year old garden. Um, I added um, Cape honeysuckle, went to honeysuckle, um, some uh, salvias, and, and this is really a hummingbird garden. But I also have some um, bird baths and misters to keep the, the water topped off in the waterfall. Um, so I rarely have to add any water and birds will bathe um, in the mist and in the um, bird baths and little dishes. Next slide is, um, this is just some hummingbird plants and I have more winter blooming plants because I want hummingbirds here in the winter. Um, so it doesn't look like much in the summer. It's a lot of greenery, um, but in the winter things are really blooming now. Next slide, this is um, a shrimp plant that's not quite in bloom. I took this earlier in the, in the year. Um, it's in full bloom now and the fire spikes blooming. And um, I've got, next slide is buff belly. Now this one, is, I took this picture in Mattery. Um, it didn't stay long. I did have a buff belly. It made an appearance and quickly passed. But the next slide shows you um, buff belly that I have in my yard now. Um, next slide is another view. And um, this bird migrates north for the winter. It breeds in the Rio Grande Valley and um, for food source issues, it doesn't stay, it migrates north. So if you're lucky enough to get one in the yard, you can hear it usually before you see it. And it's a stunning um, hummingbird. Next slide is um, a buffy um, 
leaf bathing. I actually bought a ligustrum and put it in a pot and put it under my nest, my mister, just hoping that it would bathe so I could get a picture of it. And it did. So it was um, very happy to get this picture. Then I got rid of it because it's bathing in a little um, dish now. Um, this is um, the Rufus using the, um, the next slide, using the bottle brush. So um, they do use it, they do perch in it, and I, I think it's a, a good plant to have. So moving on, um, you will get other birds um, in uh, the waterfowl. And the next slide shows you um, Louisiana water thrush. And this is a bird that we see in migration. It does breed in Northern Louisiana, but it came into the waterfowl. Um, it looks different than a um, Northern water thrush. It's got a, um, a big, uh, wide, white eyebrow and a clear throat. Um, and it was bathing in the waterfowl. Um, next slide is um, prairie warbler that um, came into the waterfall. Um, and the next slide shows him bathing very happily. Um, he breeds um, more on the North shore and further north, but we see him in uh, spring and fall migration and overwintering. It's a common bird for us to see in the winter. Next slide is a pine siskin. And I put this in just to show you, um, you might be looking for these birds out in the woods and it's, it was in my yard and you just have to look good. I was feeding finches at the time and this bird came in and um, you'll notice the yellow um, uh, base of the primaries. It's a big year for pine siskin. This bird winters further north, but sometimes they'll extend their territory further south if they run out of food. And that's what's going on right now. Um, next slide is morning warbler. And this was in Metairie. And the point of this slide is just to tell you, if you are gonna be at home and sitting in your yard, have binoculars and a camera in your lap because you never know what's gonna pop up. I've gone to camera looking for this bird and it's a skulky bird, but it just popped up and perched, stayed three seconds and flew out. But I did have morning warbler um, in, in the Metairie backyard. So to go a step further, if you, um, uh, you want to do a little bit of uh, uh, leaving the house. Um, you might have some friends that see things in their neck of the woods. Um, the next slide is a Bullock's Oriole. And this one was seen on the Harahan Batcher by Lizette Roten, who was kind enough to report it to LaBird. So you want to join these listservs so you can see what's reported. It was right behind her house, um, uh, not far from her house in the Harahan Batcher. Um, this is a Western bird um, that may, may overwinter here. So it popped in and, and who knows how long it's gonna stay. So when you see these reports, you wanna go as quick as you can because you don't know how long the bird will be around. Next slide, um, barred owl. This is just a, one of, uh, a bird that was um, in the neighborhood. Um, a bird sometimes with Kathy DeSalvo. This is um, her neighborhood, Harahan River Batcher, and she's seen a, an amazing number of birds. They're breeding um, eagles um, on the Batcher. And a lot of birds um, migrate along the Batcher, so it seems to hold them. So it's a good place to bird, not far to get to, um, comfortable um, area to bird. So another friend, Janine Robin, this is the next slide, had Bob White in her yard. I mean, they would cross the road as a group and come into her backyard. So I asked if I could come see one. I had never seen one. And I actually uh, had to back up to take this picture. The bird was so close and, and just um, allowed me to um, take a nice picture. Um, now we're going a little further. Someone reported uh, a kitty wake. Um, down in Plaquemines at a boat launch. I think it was Mary Beth Lehman, not positive, but someone reports it, get in the car and go, you don't know if you'll ever see this bird again. This bird winters um, at sea, so it breeds way far up north and it happened to be at a boat launch. Just a little um, half day trip, drive down there to the boat launch, see the bird. If you want to bird the area, you know, stay all day. It's, it's a very easy area to get to and, um, and bird. Next slide is a uh, curve-billed thrasher, same thing. This was um, in the middle of winter. Um, the streets were iced. Um, a bird with a friend, Mark 
Meniere, and I mean, we barely got out of the New Orleans. Um, the the high, uh, interstate was closed <laughs> from ice, but we got the bird. And who knows how long that bird will be hanging around, but this is another Western bird uh, that showed up during the winter. Um, so um, it was in the front lawn going from house to house. We didn't have to knock on doors, which you don't want to do. If a, a homeowner is kind enough to post something, you certainly want to talk to them um, and you get permission before you just show up in somebody's backyard. Okay, but anyway, this one was um, like on the lawn and go on the fence and we didn't have to um, contact anyone um, to see the bird. Okay, next slide is um, City Park. And this is where I, traditionally bird, um, routinely, on a daily basis in migration. Uh, sometimes I'll go in the morning, I'll go back in the evening because different birds come in um, with different fronts. And this is not a native bird. This is a bird that happens to be in the park. Um, and it's been there at least five years. Somebody uh, dropped them off and I don't know how it's still alive, but um, you can see this bird in City Park, which is amazing. Um, and it's a, um, a crested pheasant. Um, which is um, just unbelievable. Um, now, I first started birding here with Glenn Usett. He would bring me there once a week. Now I go, I'm five minutes away. I'll, I'll go, you know, as, uh, very frequently. Next slide is um, Scout Island um, and, and City Park and Katori. Um, they have lagoons that run along um, the side of the uh, 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 park and you can see all kind of, um, wading birds um, all routinely, um, egrets. Um, this is a great blue heron who posed nicely. Um, so uh, this is a um, very manageable area. It's mulched paths, it's uh, easy to bird, um, and it's an amazing number of birds because it's um, a, a forest um, with understory. So next slide, um, hooded warbler. This is in migration and it does breed further north, um, but I try to get out there as much as I can during migration. One day, uh, Mark and I had 90 species of birds um, during spring migration in City Park. Uh, next one is Mississippi Kite. Um, this bird is a breeding bird here, and so you'll hear them whistling all summer long, and they catch um, uh, insects in the air and feed. Uh, so um, I had one in the backyard of my house here perched, a juvenile that squawked all day long. I couldn't figure out what was going on, but that's what, it was an immature bird. Next slide, the uh, prothonotary warbler. Um, this is our uh, swamp canary. It breeds um, in um, marshy areas. And if you're uh, located in a, in a particular spot, you can put a nest box up of some sorts and they will nest. Um, it's um, our breeding warbler, um, and this was in City Park. Next slide is wood ducks breed here. Um, they're here year round. They put nest box up, um, and um, it's a beautiful duck. I mean, it, I think it's probably one of the prettiest ones. And next slide, you will see immature um, wood ducks. And the next slide is um, pretty young babies with the mama. Uh, so the next slide is um, Magnolia Warbler. Um, this is a um, migrant um, passing through. You can identify these if you just see the tail. I mean, if you look at the underneath of the tail, it's half black, half white. So if that is all you see of the bird, you'll be able to identify a Magnolia Warbler. Um, next slide, Golden Wing Warbler. Um, this is one we're always wanting to see. It's... Um, migratory and it's endangered. Um, I just find out, um, just reading up on it, that they nest close to the ground, if not on the ground. And they're threatened because blue wing warbler also nests in the same spot and they get there first. So they're kind of pushing out the golden wing warbler and there also is hybridization. So they don't know how long um, golden wing warblers will be around. Um, Next slide is uh, um, American Bittern, and this one was here um, for the winter. Now, usually we're down on the coast trying to get one close to dawn or dusk, hoping that you, you can um, hear one. Um, but this was in City Park on the water hyacinth out in the open, 
And I just couldn't believe that um, I was seeing it. You know, I took pictures. I was like, I can't really be a bit and, um, because they're secretive. And, uh, but it was, you know, so I was lucky enough to get a picture of that one. Next is um, American Red Start. And um, this was um, typically a little bit higher um, up in the uh, canopy, but it's, it breeds in North Louisiana and further north. And this is a male. Um, the females are more gray um, and with yellow um, instead of uh, orange. Um, but typically they fan their tails. And so you might catch that action and um, then you can um, identify uh, American red start. And this is um, in migration. Next is chestnut sided warbler. Um, now, Wendy did a presentation on confusing fall warblers. This one looks different in the fall, but um, this is a, um, a spring um, uh, in a breeding plumage, uh, chestnut sided warbler. Next slide, um, black and white. Uh, this one is, in, um, we see in migration, it also breeds in North Louisiana, and we'll see it over winter here as well. They creep along the branches, um, much like a brown creeper. Um, so um, look for the bark on, on the, uh, oak trees and that's where you'll typically find a uh, black and white warbler. Um, next slide shows him with a little worm of some sort. Um, this is a male, um, females are a little bit, um, not as dark, darkly marked. Uh, next slide is um, swallowtail kite, and these breed in North Louisiana. We see them in migration. This is Jennifer's um, bird that she um, studies and bands and researches. Um, stunning um, when you see one. Um, I remember one day seeing uh, three or four of them at one time just flying low over um, the uh, Robert E. Lee um, heading east, just um, striking. Um, next slide is, um, this is a green heron and they're a local breeder. Now I took this picture with a lens that I rented. I was thinking of getting a better lens and what I would suggest is borrow one or rent one. Um, you can do it by the day just to see if it's something that you're willing to carry. Um, if, if you want to spend that amount of money, or if you're going to go on a trip, you might want to rent one for the trip. Um, and I, took this picture in the back of City Park and decided I um, wanted it. Um, the next slide is, um, it, it's displaying. They had several birds and they were all um, doing this, um, which I had never seen. I mean, it, it, there's some things that you just read about and there's some things that you see and it's, it's just amazing. Um, but they breed in City Park. There was a nest um, recently at the back of Scout Island, low to the water, um, right over the water. Um, next is uh, black bill cuckoo. Um, this you'll see during migration. And if you notice, it's got a red orbital ring and a black bill. Um, the tail spots are different than a yellow bill cuckoo. And um, in flight, um, it will have, um, the wings will not have any rusty um, patches in the primaries that a yellow bill cuckoo has. So yellow bill cuckoo is a breeding bird here. Black bill cuckoo is, um, passing through. Um, next is um, Black Burnian Warbler, and this is one we always love to see. Um, it's just a um, neon bright, um, usually in the upper canopy, and um, it's a um, spring and fall migrant. Um, it's got a, a um, distinctive triangular um, black patch on the face and black and white um, uh, patterns on the back with this neon orange throat. Next, oh, that's the same. It's a black brownie and another picture of the black brownie. Um, next is um, cedar wax wings. Sometimes you just hear them. It's a real whispery call. You might not never see them. Um, uh, and they're usually more than one, but um, it's a um, beautiful bird. And you'll typically see it in a um, mulberry eating fruit, uh, it passing through a migration. Um, next is um, Groove Bill Ani, and we see these during winter um, and migration. It breeds further south and I, 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 it migrates north for the winter. It's not, another one of those that's looking for food resources. But this bird, I remember walking down Mona Lisa uh, Road with Mark 
Meunier and two birds fly up, one goes right and I look and it's a blue jay, one goes left and he looks and calls an ani. So that's typical, you know, he um, manages to see the good bird. But anyway, he called my attention to it and I managed to get a picture of a groove bill ani. You don't always um, see them, you hear them. Um, they're skulky and not easy to photograph, but I got lucky this time. Uh, next is uh, great horned owl. Um, there are breeders in the park. I think on Scout Island, somebody's been tracking them and keeps um, mentioning that he's seen a pair. Um, this is just a single individual that was in the back oaks of uh, Katuri Forest. Next is um, blue grosbeak. Um, this a local breeder, but not in the city. You'll see it passing through typically. And next is um, Eastern Bluebird. Um, these breed um, and winter here. Um, I saw immature birds on the festival grounds and did see um, uh, bluebirds going in out of a nest hole. So they're breeding here in the park, which is lovely. It's a really pretty bird. Um, next is uh, Black-throated blue warbler. Um, this was in City Park. Mark found this bird and it hung around for about three days. So if anybody wanted to see one, um, it was here. It usually um, migrates further east. So you don't see them all the time, um, but um, we were lucky enough to have this adult male um, for um, a good while um, in City Park, uh, mid, mid canopy. It wasn't up high in the trees. It was easy to see and very cooperative. Um, next is golden crown kinglet, and um, this is a wintering bird. Um, it's uh, pretty much widespread, um, and it'll be um, kind of high up in the trees. Next slide shows you the top of its head. It's got a golden crown. The male has a little red in the um, crown. Um, cute little bird. Uh, next is uh, black throated green. This is um, a bird that passes through migration, it has a longer migration in the fall. So you have a more of an opportunity to see black-throated green. And it might not be that you see more of them, but you'll, it's, it's a longer period of time for them to pass. Um, next is uh, Philadelphia warbler. This um, could be mistaken for warbling, but what you wanna look at is the lures. There's a dark line in front of the eye. A warbling vireo has got a plain um, white um, face and is not as yellow as this bird, but it, this is a, um, a pretty um, Philadelphia warbler that we saw um, out in New Orleans East um, passing through in migration. Next is um, common ground dove, and we saw these on Recovery Road. They're declining. Um, you don't see them um, that frequently. They're usually in, um, uh, 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 hidden in um, woodlands, but they differ from Inca doves because they have a pink bill and um, a very short squared off tail. Plus there's not as scaled of an appearance. Um, the next slide will show you Inca dove, and this is a, um, a more widespread, and this will be at feeders in some um, areas. This was in Baton Rouge taken in someone's yard. You can see the longer tail and they have um, white tail feathers and a scaled appearance um, without a pink bill, a local breeder bird. Next is um, yellow breasted chat. Um, this was taken at Bayou Sauvage. Sometimes you hear them talking, um, you don't see them, they're skulky, um, but they breed in dense woods. Um, so um, I've seen them on the North Shore and actually we had one down in Venice um, over the weekend. Next is um, a cuckoo, um, yellow-billed cuckoo. This is a breeding bird. Um, you'll notice a, a little bit of the rusty patch in the wings if you really see it in flight, but it's got a yellow bill and yellow orbital ring. Next slide is ash-throated flycatcher. Um, this is uh, out in New Orleans East on Recovery Road, we call it. Um, it's a wintering bird. It's typically um, a Western breeder, but they come here for the winter. Pale gray throat, um, small bill, um, and I'll have another slide that shows you the tail that is, uh, helps um, in IDing the bird, but um, it's, it's um, 
can be confused with brown crested, but this is a smaller bill and uh, paler. Okay, next is another shot of the siskin, pine siskin, and you can see the yellow base um, to the primaries, um, streaky um, bird. This one winters north, but again, if there's a um, food shortage, you'll see them come a little bit further south. Next is a painted bunting, and this was taken at um, the spillway. This is the first painted bunting I saw, um, and it, they're calling. I mean, if you go in there in summer, you can hear them drive the lever, you can just hear them singing. Um, and I did play its song. It flew towards me, grabbed the worm, and posed, and I was able to get um, a picture of the first painted bunting I ever saw. Um, next is um, red cockaded. So we're going a little bit further. We're gonna to go to the North Shore now, um, not an hour away. Um, this bird breeds um, on the North Shore and it's endangered. So they have uh, put nest boxes in the pine trees where it likes to nest to help facilitate nesting. Um, the bird also drills holes around the nest um, to let pine pitch leak out and protect the nestlings from predators. Uh, next is uh, pileated, and this is um, breeds uh, in the state. Um, it's in mature woodlands. I know I've seen them in um, Woodland Conservancy on the West Bank, but this was taken um, on Boy Scout Road on the North Shore. Um, next is, this was taken in um, a Covington backyard, Margaret and John Owens feed everything and she puts out suet um, and was lucky enough to have Pileated come into her yard. Uh, next is um, a long-tailed duck. Now this bird breeds in tundra ponds, but it winters at sea. It was a foggy day and we could barely see the road, um, but Mark and I decided to go try to see this long-tailed duck. So the point of this slide is if the weather's bad, go anyway. You just don't know how long the bird's gonna stick around. We, had ne we would never have gotten this close to the bird if it wasn't foggy. Um, so, you know, if it's raining, bring rain gear. Um, if it's foggy, take your best chances. Next slide is a loon that was in the same pond. I mean, I, you could never get this close to um, a bird like that um, and get some nice pictures. Next slide is sedge wrens. They were all over the field surrounding House Beach. Um, they're here for the winter, it's a wintering bird. Next slide is um, a red-headed woodpecker. Um, I've seen them on the South Shore um, and Lizette's yard and immature birds. So, there's some breeding going on, but it's typically um, a more wooded area. This is Fountain Blow State Park on the North Shore. And the next slide is Owens's backyard, um, eating her suet. Um, beautiful bird. Okay, next slide is ash rodent, and you'll see the tail on um, this bird where there's a, um, a bit of a J at the bottom of it. It's darker on the outside and across the bottom of the tail. That's um, uh, identification from brown crested is this um, uh, dark tip across the tail. Pale throat, small bill, um, ash-throated. Braithwaite is a subdivision uh, area south. Uh, it's in um, St. Bernard and they have a golf course there that's no longer operational and some ponds. And so you'll see ducks come in and um, you can bird the, um, the golf course and see flycatchers and stuff in the winter. So this is you know, not an hour from the city um, in another territory that we like to bird. Next slide, McGillivries. This was in Baton Rouge. Um, so you wanna read your reports, um, La Bird, eBird, you know, uh, put in alerts for um, something that you haven't seen for the year or something that you've never seen. Um, this bird, we went there once to see it, never did, heard it, um, but it was across a, a waterway in tangles. Second trip, we got lucky and saw McGillivries. This is a Western bird that uh, came for the winter um, and we were lucky enough to um, get pictures. Uh, next slide is Henslow Sparrow. This bird winters here and this was in Sandy Hollow uh, Wildlife Management Area and they like wet fields. So the trick is to walk across a wet field as fast as you can 
um, and hopefully the bird will fly. Um, it doesn't have strong flight. And if there's a bush close by, it might land in the bush and you can get a picture of it. So you can see how this goes. You're walking across a wet field, hoping that you don't fall down and you can get the bird tired before you can't stand it anymore. <laughs> uh, but a, a beautiful bird. Next slide is Kentucky Warbler, these breed on the North Shore. This is in Bogachitta State Park, and it's a very skulky bird. It's hard to, um, to photograph, it's hard to see, but I just got lucky this bird perched, um, and it's a, um, a striking bird. Now, it's a local breeder along with the next slide, which is Swainson's Warbler. This one was singing on territory, and it's, uh, they're very low to the ground, very skulky, um, and um, usually on the ground, um, but I was able to, um, get a picture of him. Next slide is um, a limpkin, and this is expanding its territory. I think Kathy Rhodes reported it. I'm not positive, but I know it was along a canal south of Homa um, on Hollywood Drive and um, just right out in the open. And it's um, nesting um, successfully and expanding its territory from Florida. Um, it eats apple snails of all things, which is great because we're starting to have a problem with apple snails. Next is um, canvasback. This was down in Braithwaite. Um, look through all your ducks, all these um, scalp because you never know what's gonna pop up. Um, this is a wintering bird um, and um, it, it could be overlooked. Next is uh, Nelson Sparrow, and this was a Christmas bird count, um, freezing cold, um, dawn, down in the Bureau's boat launch. We played some fuzzy tape, and I want to say 60 of them popped up. Um, it's here for the winter. Um, and I put a couple of more slides. Next two slide, next slide is um, just um, perched Nelson's Sparrow, because I love how they perch. Um, next slide, chipping sparrows. Um, they winter here, um, they do breed in north of the state and um, they're pretty common in the winter. We'll see them in City Park. This happened to be taken in Venice, um, but um, they can be in, in City Park. Next slide, um, grasshopper sparrow. So we're going further down. This is all the way down at the end of the road at Venice. Venice is about two hours to get to the end. So um, sometimes we'll just drive all over the end and bird the way back or however you want to do it. You can stop midway, um, you know, but there's all kinds of places to bird in Venice. And again, this is a day trip. Um, grasshopper sparrow, it winters here and is very secretive. And the only reason I got this picture is because I was in the car and I had my camera in my lap. So sometimes car birding can be very effective um, because it's a hide and you're driving along with a bird can't see you. Um, or you're not going to spook it. And I got a, a close up, um, very nice view of a grasshopper sparrow right on the side of the road. Next is um, wood stork. And this was in the spillway. They have a festival every year, um, Sherburne um, wood stork festival, which they weren't able to have. But um, this bird breeds south of here. And um, the population that we see here breeds in Mexico and then um, migrates um, in, uh, in winters here. So you might see, it might be late summer, early fall when we, when we see it here. Um, a, a really unusual looking bird. Um, next slide is um, sandhill cranes and this is rice country. Some might, might pose sandhill cranes are back and you just got to draw the, the back roads and hope that you see them. Um, you might um, go looking for them and not see them. You might not be looking for them and then they pop up. Um, but um, it's a, a very uh, striking bird and they, and they could be a large flocks of them at, um, when you do see them. Next slide is another um, uh, picture that you just turn, take a right turn and look and, and happen to see them, you know, um, even if you're um, not looking for them. Next slide, uh, Lincoln Sparrow. This is a winter bird and it, got to look at your sparrows close. This kind of looks like a swamp sparrow, but it's got fine streaks across the breast and a buffy um, tone. So uh, look carefully. And I heard this bird um, something chipping and uh, it just didn't sound like a swamp. So uh, we were listening to something else and I said, let's go back and, and check this out. And sure enough, it was a Lincoln sparrow. Uh, next slide is um, 
spoonbills, this was taken in the summer, um, they're breed here and you know, it's hot in, in the summer, you might not feel like birding, but there's breeding birds. So go look at some rookeries. It's a nice little day trip. This was Kazan Lake. Um, I'm not quite sure what they're doing with it. They were talking about developing a bit just so that it was easy to see the birds. And I don't know what happened because I, I don't know if that was gonna disturb things, but I went before any of that happened. And you could just stand along the side of the road and, and take pictures of um, spoonbills um, nesting. There's four birds in this nest. Next slide is some, something more um, that you might know about more is Rip's Rookery. Um, they had spoonbills, but I just wanted to take these little blue herons. This was on a smaller little island behind the main rookery. And I just think that's a beautiful, um, beautiful bird with, I don't think it had four birds in the nest. Okay, so now we're gonna go a little bit further. We're going to Grand Isle. Um, and, and this is um, Grand Isle, you can find anything. Um, it, it, these are piping plovers. These are endangered and we see them in migration. But Grand Isle has woodlands, beach, um, uh, uh, offshore birds, fields, um, everything. You know, so go as much as you can. It's a little over two hours to get to Grand Isle, but um, uh, typically when I do stay overnight anywhere, it's going to be Grand Isle. I try to stay several days in the spring during migration, um, just to try to get um, uh, optimum um, uh, migration. But um, these are piping plovers, and they're endangered. Um, they went to here and we also see them in migration. Next is um, lark sparrow and this is another winter bird I saw in Grand Isle. Um, they breed west of here but you can sometimes see them in the winter. Next slide, golden wing warbler and this is a, um, a, just another picture of them so you can see it's black throat um, from below. You might think oh chickadee, it's not, look close. Um, golden wing, um, just a stunning bird. Next is um, black pole, and um, we don't see them um, uh, all the time, but um, this year was a good year. Uh, we had multiple black poles. I mean, some years are like that, you'll say another black pole, but this is a um, male. Uh, you usually see them um, just in spring migration, not in fall. Next is a scarlet tanager. Um, this one is not quite in breeding plumage. Um, and we see them here in the park, but this was Grand Isle. We're just um, going with Grand Isle for right now. Next slide is another shot with the bug. And next is Baltimore Oriole. This was on um, Elmer's Island, which is right before you get to Grand Isle. And um, they had uh, Cape May warblers and Baltimore Orioles in the trees, just one after the other. This was just one of those days where things were coming in. And um, the, people will put fruit out for it, um, but um, I'm not gonna see that in my yard, but um, this is uh, in migration. Oyster catcher, every time we go, we look for oyster catcher. You go to the state park, um, walk out on the pier, uh, look down the beach. Um, I think we walked on the beach to get this oyster catcher, um, but um, it's a, a breeding bird here. Next is clapper rail. This is Port Fouchon. When you head down to Grand Isle, before you hit the main road towards the island, you end up in Port Fouchon. There's a, a mitigation area where they, it's turned into marshland. So you wanna look and uh, see what, um, what birds are breeding there. Clapper rail with the baby. Um, uh, next is Canada warbler. Um, this year we had, I wanna say five or six in one trip, um, usually in the fall, this is an adult male. Um, with its um, necklace and big eye ring, um, very yellow bird. Um, and we were very happy to see um, an adult male. It's a beautiful bird. Next is um, like Ned Stilt. And you'll see these, um, oh, you know, um, widespread. Um, but this day was raining. And the next slide will show you um, the little, um, I don't know if this is a couple of days old, um, young black neck stilt that we would never have seen, but we were in the car because it was raining. So just because it's raining doesn't mean don't go. It means go. I mean, that's a, probably a better time to go. It's not the most pleasant car burning in the rain with um, everything getting wet, but um, sometimes in a car um, as a hog, you can see a lot of more, more things from, from the car. Next is a uh, avocet. This is still in breeding plumage. They winter here. Um, this is Grand Isle. Um, we also saw flocks of them down in Cameron. Um, uh, 
very unique um, bill. Next is um, lease turn and they breed on the island. Um, this is called Exxon Fields. We just call it that. It's not Exxon anymore, but there are fields that are set aside and roped off for lease turn to breed also on the beach in the state park. So you want to be careful um, where you walk because um, these birds um, nest on the ground. And um, next slide is um, marble guy. What this is a, a bird you'll see in migration, um, big long bill. Notice it's raining. Um, uh, and if it's raining, the birds will land. So um, you kind of want to time it for a front to come through um, when it's raining. I mean, I've been down there where the water was on the sidewalk and we actually saw a turtle float over um, past us. So weather, don't let the weather stop you. That's when you want to go. Next is cerulean. That's another one we always looking for. This one seems to be in the higher canopy. And this is a male. You'll see um, it's black. Um, it looks black. It's blue, um, but it's a necklace. Um, um, and you, you might just see the bird from underneath. So look close um, to see if you don't have a cerulean. Uh, next is um, prairie warbler. And um, this is a, the uh, one that migrates, but we also see it um, in the winter and it breeds um, further north. Next is um, seaside sparrow. This is a breeding bird. I have Grand Isle, but this was on Elmas Island. Um, it, they breed on the marsh there and also um, down in other marshy areas. Um, but we're talking about Grand Isle. Um, you'll see it's a very dark sparrow. It's almost blackish and it has a um, diagnostic yellow spot in front of its eye. Uh, next slide is just another shot. Um, it posed nicely. Again, in the car, you're driving down Emma's Island. It's on the side of the road. You can get a nice shot. Next slide, Inca. Um, they, we saw a nest um, um, on the island. So I just have a, another picture of um, Inca dove. Next is bobolink. Um, these are in spring migration only um, because they breed further east of us. Um, though we did see a female in the fall um, out at Bayou Sauvage, but this is um, typically a spring migration bird um, and a very unusual bird, very unusual call. I mean, if you hear it, it's electronic. Next is upland sandpiper on Grand Isle. So um, you wanna look in the fields. This is a bigger sandpiper and it's gonna be in the grass and you might just see its little head sticking up. It's got a big eye ring and a long skinny bill and you might just see its little neck sticking up. So um, you gotta look close um, uh, for uplands. Next is uh, summer tanager. This is a breeding bird here. It's in a white mulberry. Um, it eats fruit and bugs um, and uh, uh, it will, um, look yellow in the fall. But anyway, this is a, an adult um, breeding uh, summer tanager. Next is a great kingbird. Um, this bird um, breeds um, south of us and we happen to see this in spring. Um, it just, um, I don't know, um, went a little further north, but it breeds in the Florida Keys. Look close at everything. This We almost mistook this for a, sh a shrike. Um, and um, it, uh, it's, um, they had several of them, I think, last year, but this year we found one individual um, on Grand Isle. Next is uh, Wilson's plover. This is a local breeder and endangered. And if you'll notice, it has a band. Um, so you want to, if possible, um, try to get a photograph where you can read the band and report it um, to the bird banding lab laboratory. If you just Google bird banding laboratorial, laboratory, it will give you a form you can download and fill out and send to them so they can um, look up information on this bird. And this is one of the longest breeding birds on Grand Isle. Um, so we were happy to um, get them that information. Next slide is just another shot of a Wilson's and a, another bird with the different banding, you know, the several bands that you wanna report um, and they all um, are, are important. Next is a worm-eating warbler, and this breeds in North Louisiana. It's a leaf gleaner. So whenever you're looking just up in the trees, looking for birds, um, look for dead leaves because that's where this bird hangs out. Next slide, we'll just show you a top view of the stripes on his head. It's a um, neat looking bird, but typically in dead leaves. Next 
is Cape May. Now this bird was um, in a bottle brush, not in a native plant. It was not in the conservancy. It was on someone's lawn on Grand Isle, but someone reported it. And um, we were going down there anyway, you know, look for the Cape May, it's um, in the next block. Um, it defended the bottle brush for a couple of days. Um, there were hummingbirds buzzing around, but he was determined to keep his territory. This you see in spring migration um, and, and that's all. Next is um, a little blue that um, breeds year round here. Um, it was just a cold, awful CBC. We didn't see many birds, but this one was hunkered down in the ditch and I just took a picture of him because he's pretty. Next is uh, Black Whisker. David Muth found this bird. Um, it was in the state park um, uh, in some um, brush and you could hear that bird. Um, so uh, once he reported it, um, we went down there and you could hear it uh, vocalizing before you even found it. Um, but it's kind of looks like a red eye barrier, but no red eye. And he's got these black whiskers um, that are um, uh, using identification, bigger bill, um, uh, the head pattern's a little bit lighter. Um, there are some breeding records in the state, but it typically breeds south of us. Next is rose-breasted grosbeak. You'll see this in migration. Um, look in the, in the mulberries and um, that's where you'll find him. A oh, beautiful bird. Next, um, yellow-throated warbler. Um, they breed in Louisiana. We'll see them in spring and fall migration, a little going a little further north. And we also see them overwintering, um, black and white on the top, and it's got this striking yellow throat. Next is um, spoonbills, um, rosy spoonbills. This was one morning, um, just the light was incredible. Um, there were hundreds of birds on Exxon Fields in a ditch. There must have been something, some food source there that had all the birds um, packed next to each other, but um, nice lighting for um, roseate spoonbill. They breed here and they overwinter on the coast. Um, now my favorite next is radish egret, and this is a banded bird, so of course you want to report that. Um, but it breeds on the coast and you can find it pretty much year round down on the coast, that's all. Um, so I've got a couple of slides. This is another one. This was on Elmer's Island. Um, not the best picture, not crisp. So the next slide is, I painted it so I can improve my pictures because I'm not really a good photographer. <laughs> and um, hopefully I can make it a little bit better with the watercolor, or at least prop out things that, that I don't like. Uh, next picture is, um, this is a reddish um, feeding and if you see it's got its wings out and it rocks from side to side. So um, you, if you see the bird at a distance, you can ID it just by um, its um, demeanor, uh, just the way it feeds, it's almost a jerky motion um, and then it'll um, stab its prey and catch its prey. Um, next is uh, Kentucky. This is just another, um, um, picture of uh, one we saw earlier. It's a local breeder on the North Shore. It's passing through migration and I was lucky enough to get a picture. Um, another next slide is a black bill cuckoo, just another shot of the um, red orbital ring and the black bill, um, a migrant. Um, next slide is a yellow-headed blackbird. Um, we just saw these last week down in Venice. It's a Western vagrant. You'll see them um, during migration and um, it's just a stunning bird. Um, it's a, a little bit uh, bigger than a, a um, cow bird. It's a bigger bird, um, but always um, a fun to see. Sometimes you might just see a female that's got a little bit of yellow on the throat, but this is a male, a striking male. Um, next slide, um, barn squallows. It's raining, the birds are grounded. You can get a picture of a barn swallow now because they're purged. So uh, again, don't let the, the, the water, the rain um, throw you off. That's some of the best birding um, that you can do. Um, next slide, dig sisal. These breed on the, in the North Shore further north. They'll pass through a migration. Um, a very um, striking bird. Next slide. Indigo bunting, they breed a little north and we'll see them during migration. Next slide, oven bird. You typically see them on the ground. I got a picture of one perch, but they're usually walking along, bobbing along. 
um, and we see them in migration, but they tend to overwinter. We'll, uh, not too infrequent to see one overwintering. Next slide, Wimbro. Um, this winter's here. You'll see these on the lawns in um, Grand Isle um, and um, uh, Longville that's designed for it to um, dig into the uh, soil for its food source. Um, next slide, uh, forktail flycatcher. This one was just reported, I'm going to say yesterday. Um, it's also with a white tail kite, so it might be making a trip. But this bird, um, it breeds well south of us, and sometimes it just uh, comes further north, and, and you know, somebody will report it, so you want to go see. You don't know how long this bird will hang. Um, it's widespread tropical species, but it just seems to wander. So um, you want to um, be on the lookout um, along uh, fence lines for forktail flycatcher. Next is um, another slide, forktail flycatcher. Uh, next is vermilion. This is a winter resident. Um, if you go down Ravenna Road, you'll find one now. The, every year they seem to be there, and I'm, I think I've seen eight or so at a time. But um, this is in um, Bell Chase, and you just drive along the, um, the um, road and they're perched along the fences. It's a winter resident um, that breeds southwest of Louisiana. Next is a roadrunner. We went to Monroe. We were on another trip looking for something else, but they breed in the no northwestern part of the state. So um, we wanted to, I had never seen a roadrunner. I mean, it's just a, a, a funny bird. <laughs> Next slide is another view. Um, uh, roadrunner and it runs along the road. That's what they do. <laughs> Okay, next is an eagle, and I just took this picture, put this one in. Um, this is the first good look I got of an eagle. It was flying towards us, and we were on the highway, pulled over, and saw it land in the field, pick up a footful of hay, obviously um, making its nest and fly off. So um, it's nice to get pictures of birds building, nest building, instead of just perched on a feeder or something like that. Next is um, gray kiskadee. This bird um, is nesting in Sam Houston State Park. Um, so we went and walked the park and heard it vocalize and two of them landed in a tree. They're actually expanding its territory. It's usually west of, of here, but this is in uh, Western Louisiana. Um, next is um, Shreveport. We went to see um, a sparrow, which uh, it's a, a golden crown sparrow that will be in the next slide. But in the meantime, bird the area and we managed to get another Henslow sparrow. It's a really nice area. This is the one trip we really stayed. Um, this was earlier this year in January before the pandemic took control. Um, but um, we'll get there again. I think um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, Next slide is the golden crown sparrow. And this one, it breeds um, up the Pacific coast and winters in California. I don't know what it's here, but somebody reported it. You get in the car and go because you don't know if you'll ever see this bird. I don't know if I'll get to California. So I have to be able to make little trips like this um, uh, if I'm gonna see some of these birds. Um, next is a uh, Vesper sparrow. Um, this is a wintering sparrow. Um, you can't see it on the slide, but the tail has um, auto tail feathers that are white. And so look through your sparrows carefully. You might see a bunch of savannas, but look, um, this is a Vesper. It's got a big white eye ring and the tail um, lo looks different. Um, so uh, a lot of sparrows spend the winter here. Look through your sparrows. Um, next is Cameron. We're going a little further. Um, and I've done this in a day. It's not the easiest thing to do. And I don't know if it's a good time to go to Cameron right now. They're still um, trying to clean up. Um, but this is a neotropic cormorant. And it differs from the uh, double crested with this um, body is smaller, but also this white gape, which is very noticeable in this picture. Smaller build um, and um, the yellow does not go above the eye. Um, neotropical. I, I did see, there are some here um, out um, along the um, spillway um, and, uh, and I think um, South Point by Sauvage, but um, this one was in Cameron. Um, next is um, tricolored, which you'll see everywhere, but this is a, a nice picture of the different colors of a tricolored heron that was formerly Louisiana heron. 
Next slide is a curlew. This, we had five of them on the beach in Cameron um, when we went. It breeds farther north, um, but winters here. Um, and um, I saw it, it had its um, bill buried up to its eyes feeding. So whatever it's getting, that's how far down it's gotta go. So it's um, well equipped. Next slide this is just a spoon bill on somebody's flooded lawn in Cameron. It's just amazing um, uh, what you can see. Next slide, um, scissor tail flycatcher. These breed west of here, but this was just in Cameron. Um, and uh, I, I believe we found um, a nesting pair. Um, next slide, Merlin. Um, this is a, a falcon that we saw in Pintail Loop. And um, it's got a wide terminal band on its tail, which is diagnostic. Um, so that's um, one thing you wanna try to see. Um, in your photographs. Next is uh, Crested Caracara. These are Western birds. Um, and the next slide shows um, one that was on CBC. This is in Cameron. I don't know what he's carrying or why, but they breed in West Louisiana. Um, but this was not a, a Western uh, a breeding time of year. I don't know what it was doing, but um, I managed to get close shots of it. Next is um, Harris's sparrow, they're here for the winter. Um, nice plump sparrow with the black face, very striking. Um, next is um, Swainson's hawk. This bird, we were driving in the car and, and going down the road and I looked to my left and this bird was perched. You almost overlooked it, it was so close to you. Um, but it obviously is stuffed um, from its last meal and was not interested in flying off. And this is not a crop photo. This is how close the bird was to me. Um, it's a winter bird here. Next is um, bittern. Again, driving in the car. You're never going to see a bittern like this, but you're in a natural high just driving along Pintail Loop. Um, next slide will show you how you usually see a um, bittern um, hiding with its bill up. Um, trying to um, look like a um, piece of marsh grass. Next is uh, Eastern Meadowlark, they're all over. Um, but if you're west, you wanna listen to the calls because it could be a Western Meadowlark. And I don't think it's too easy to identify, but you wanna listen to its call because um, we had Western Meadowlark when we were um, in Western Louisiana. Um, next slide is um, buff-breasted sandpiper, and this is in Cameron. We used to be able to drive along the um, Cameron Prairie. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. They kind of um, closed it off the last time we went, um, but this is a um, sandpiper that likes to be in short grass and again in the car as a hide, and we were able to get really nice close-up pictures. Um, Next slide is um, scissor tail flycatcher, um, and they breed west of here. Next slide, purple gallinu. It's a, birding, a breeding bird here. We've seen them out in New Orleans East. Um, this one was after a heavy rain on the side of the road, trying to dry out um, in the car, managed to get some pictures um, without scaring it, um, still in the car. Next picture, this was um, heading down to Cameron, um, uh, uh, and beach on Rutherford Beach Road, and there were thousands of birds. It was just one of those um, situations where the water level was right, um, and hoping you see a fowl rope. I don't know how many birds there were there. I think there was 12,000 birds estimated there. So um, nice views of Wilson's fowl rope, which is here during migration. Next is um, Wilson snipe, which is a winter bird. Um, and this one just posed nicely, so um, I managed to get a picture of them. And uh, next slide is, uh, this is a bird I took through a kitchen window and it's a Rufus hummingbird. It was freezing cold. This is in Baton Rouge um, at one of the banding um, events and it's in torpor. Um, so uh, the, you'll see it's flopped up, its eyes are closed. It, the feeders were frozen. We had to bring the feeders in um, defrost them, put it back out and swap them out during the day because it never did get above freezing. But you can make a big difference in um, um, helping these birds if you just keep your faders up because everything was frozen to the ground. They didn't have any plants. And this bird um, perked up and fed and um, when we left it was flying. Okay. 
The next um, is my camera. Now you look, it's a big lens. Um, it's a 400 millimeter. It's a heavy lens. Um, you want to make a decision. Like I said, you might want to borrow one, lease one, try it out. It's a heavy lens. I've got a strap that goes over my shoulder and I connect it to the tripod mount. Um, it's a very good lens. Um, I, I want at this point in my life to have the best equipment I can um, because I need all the help I can get. Um, so that's the end of it. Um, if there's any questions.